If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to do speed remapping or speed ramping in Premiere Pro. Sort of like this. All right, so what you saw there was two ramps of speed in that little clip that I made for Micah skateboarding. Let's get right into it and show you how to do it in Adobe Premiere Pro. So here's a clip that I have of Micah and it's at 100% speed and he goes by. I wanna make this more exciting by making it go slow when he goes up the ramp and faster when he leaves the ramp. A couple of things you should know about speed remapping. Um, when you start up Premiere and you drag a clip to the timeline, you're not gonna have any kind of visibility to speed remapping. In fact, it's gonna look a little like this. So I just dragged this clip to the timeline and it's nice and small and I don't know how to do speed stuff yet. Well, if you double click in the space over here by your, uh, I can drag this down to number one. If you double click that space there, it opens it up. You can also grab this handle here. I like to just double click cause it's easier. And there's a line here. This line is not speed, this line is for opacity. So if I bring this line down, you can see the image gets darker, okay? So I'm gonna undo that. And I can set keyframes. Once again, if I hold down the command, the the command key on the Mac, control key on the Windows, and I go boop, 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 I just set up some keyframes. So now if I move these guys down and around, notice that the opacity goes down, up, and down, and up. And I don't want to do opacity though, I want speed. Check this out. I'm going to right click on this little FX, the gray FX. I'm going to right click on it and notice opacity is selected, but I want to go to time remapping and speed. Now that gives me a new line. It gives me the speed line. So everything that happens here is also reflected in your effect controls. Remember that you can, you always have visibility to whatever you're doing on the timeline and your effect controls. Okay. Let's move our cursor to where we want the speed to slow down. So let's say right here. We want the speed to slow down. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hold down Command or Control, or I can go to the Pen tool if I want and create a keyframe. We're gonna create a keyframe. I'm gonna zoom in, key or a keyframe right there. And that brings up this interesting little handle. It doesn't bring up a keyframe per se, it brings up this little handle. But if you notice, now if I grab this line Okay, it's only affecting, and this is the percentage of speed, by the way. This is the percentage of speed that the clip is going. So it starts at 100. If I move it up to 200, around there, the clip got smaller because that section is going by faster. And in my source view, my monitor view, he goes faster. Okay, so once he hits that, he goes faster, and that has actually affected the speed. Now it didn't ramp yet. And I'll show you how to do that. But first things first, we don't want them to go faster. We want them to go slower. So I'm gonna grab this line and bring it down to about, let's say 40. Let's take it down to 40. Now I shot this video footage at 48 frames per second. The higher your frame rate, the more you're gonna be able to milk out of this effect. So if you shoot at 80 or 120, it's gonna be really super sweet and smooth and milky, okay? So just remember that. Uh, now we have it where he's going full speed and then he hits a wall and he goes slow, okay? And then what I wanna do is, he goes up. At this point, I want him to come out of it. So once again, I'm gonna hold Command or Control, set another point here, okay? And then we're gonna drag this back to 100%. So now we have it looking like this. He goes fast, he goes slow, he goes fast. But there was no ramping. But as you can see, I'm altering the speed of a clip without clipping the, without cutting the clip into different little clips. Now let's talk about the ramping part. The ramping part is pretty cool. And this is how Premiere does it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see um, these little handles that showed up when we made our key point, okay? And these little handles, I am able to drag out. So if I grab one and I start to drag it, as you can see, it's defining a slope for the length of time it takes to go from one speed to the other. 
And if you look, here's something that a lot of uh, uh, Premier people, beginners, don't really know about. When I grab one of these handles, this window now changes to showing me the beginning frame and the end frame of this particular effect. So the beginning frame is 4 seconds and 12 frames. The end is 4 seconds and 18. But you can see, I can see what's at the beginning and what's at the end. It's super useful. Now when I press play, he slows down linearly and then he pops back in because I didn't do anything to the other side. So let's do the other side also. So let's grab one of these handles and drag it out so we can see a slope. Now when we play this, we're going to go linear slope to slow, linear to fast. When I say linear, it's because it's not ramping. It is ramping, but it's not a smooth ramp. If you want a smooth ramp, check this out. When we zoom in and we click in this little, click one of these little handlebars, we get our Bezier uh, handle. Okay, so now what I can do is I can drag this handle. If I can click it, oh, grab it. There you go. If I drag it this way, notice how it's kind of smoothing out. It's really, really subtle right now. I don't know if you can really see it, but I'm going to drag it this way. I'm going to smooth out that, that curve. And actually, if I make this even more pronounced, see that? Now you can really see how it smooths out. It's either linear or smooth. All right? So I want to smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to bring that back up to 40 because I just did that just to show you an example. Notice how it's pulling the other part of the clip in because I'm making this uh, shorter. All right, let's come back out. Uh, there's my subscribe button. Woo! And once we do that, there's a slow, a slow ramp into it. And then still linear out. So let's do this side too. I'm going to zoom in nice and tight so you guys can see. There it is. All right? I'm going to zoom in on here too. And now, actually, let me zoom in as much as I can. Grab this. Bend it. Make it nice and smooth there you go and that's how you do speed ramping in Adobe Premiere now I want to show you one more thing because there's always a bonus in our in our episodes um, that's useful for doing exciting things like skateboarding and snowboarding and all that other stuff but it's also very useful for the more mundane kind of work that you may getting be getting a lot of we do a lot of corporate videos and stuff like that um, so let me show you an example using the speed ramping there. And this is an example that actually we talked about, or actually we talked about in our video, um, how to make stock footage more exciting, which you can see. We'll link to it in this video. You can go check that out. But here's a clip of an office scene. And if I double click this, you can see that we have a woman with, a, with an iPad or whatever. And she's talking, and at one point, she walks over to this part to talk to some more people. All right. Now, one thing you may notice about this is it's in slow motion. We got this from Pond5, and a lot of footage that we get from um, stock footage places, uh, they'll shoot it in kind of a slow motion. They'll shoot it at uh, higher frame rates and stuff. So you can do interesting things so you have more frames to work with. So this is one of those in particular. Now, what I have to do is, uh, when it shows up in Premiere, it's showing up as 23.976. So when I drag it to my timeline, it's going to actually play a little slower. And actually, I'm going to do uh, right-click, scale to frame size. OK, now it's this, the frame size. And uh, one thing you can do when dealing with different frame rates than what your timeline is, is called time interpolation, I think. Uh, let's take a look. In the bin, I'm going to right click on this. So this uh, Premiere is showing this as 23.976. I'm going to right click it and go to Modify, Interpret Footage. That brings up this dialog box. And up top, it says, OK, I will use the frame rate that I'm getting reported from the file, which is 23.976. Or you can tell me what to use. And I'm going to tell it in this case, my timeline right now is 29.976. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And now, as you notice, Premiere is like, OK, we're going to deal with this like it's 29.98 frames per second because it rounds up. Drag it to the timeline, and we're set. OK, so now we have nice, silky smooth uh, uh, movement. There are no duplicate frames. If you ever notice that when you, when you um, take a, a clip 
and you scrunch it down with the rate stretch tool or stretch it out, you might get some duplicate frames. It might handle a little differently. Try this method where you do time, interpret footage and just set it at what you want. Try this out for size. But let's get back to, to ramping now. So I'm going to scale this to frame size. So an ex as an example, we'll use the same kind of technique where we have a nice normal playback of the video, right? So this is where the action's happening, but then she takes a walk and not much action is happening during this walk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, as soon as she starts to walk away, I'm gonna right click, right? Go to time remapping, speed, great. We're gonna set a key point. We're gonna scroll this all the way to the point where something interesting happens, maybe when, maybe when she gets about here. And we're going to set another keyframe right there. Okay, come back. We can ramp it if we want, but right now I'm gonna set this as the definition of how long it takes to get from one speed to the other, and this as the definition of how long it takes to get one from one speed to the other. And if I bring this up to Let's go 300% faster because she's pretty slow. Drag it all the way up to 300% and take a look. So she's ready to go. Boop, and we're back. All right, and once again, I can do the same kind of smooth, smoothing it of, of it out. If I click one of these handles, then I get, I'm gonna make this even bigger so you can really see this handle. Look at that. Look at that handle right there. Drag it. You, that's where it makes it nice and smooth, that ramp, all right? And I'm gonna do the same thing to this side over here. Zoom that puppy in, click one of these. There we go. So now we've got a situation where she walks, smoothly ramps up, and smoothly ramps down. It's sort of like an ease in and ease out of that state. Uh, one other thing is if you need to move this around, here's some tips. If you need to, if you decide, hey, this isn't really the place I want her to start walking faster, I actually want her to start walking faster when she looks at this guy. If you hold the cursor down in between your two moments, right, you get a double arrow. Otherwise, you'll get this, which means move this, and this, which means move this. But if I have my double arrow here, I can move the whole thing. And if I drag this, I can redefine. Notice how Premiere is saying, okay, here's where this effect is gonna start, and here's where this effect is gonna end. So it'll start as soon as she looks at that guy. And yes, it does. All right, so that's how you move that around. One other thing that uh, will help you in this is if you've already defined all your clips, if you look at my time right, right now, this clip, is this clip is already defined, this clip, but if I wanted to mess with this clip, and start doing time remapping. What I typically will do sometimes is there's a free track above it. I'll move it to the track above it and then start goofing around with, you know, motion, uh, sorry, uh, uh, time remapping speed, which I already had set, okay. And then when I start to mess around with it, because look what happens if I make this longer here, look at that. Now, if that was on the same timeline, it actually wouldn't affect the other clips. It would just make it slower and then it doesn't push all the other clips out of the way. Okay. It could get, so suffice it to say, it can get, can get a little confusing if you're trying to do time remapping with clips around them. So what I suggest doing is move it to a free track, then mess around with your time remapping or move it to a, a, another timeline like I always have a select timeline, which is just junk that I can play with. So you have a timeline where you just throw stuff in, you play with it, and you bring it back into your real sequence after it's done. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out PullMyFocus.tv for all our other articles and uh, videos. And uh, check us out on PixelValleyStudio.com forward slash courses to see what other courses that we have available for you guys to check out. And with that... Ramp your speed. I will see you guys on the next one. Later. Ramping, boring stuff. I wonder if I can ramp her backwards. <laughs>